All right. Good morning. Happy Thursday. This is period A3 AP. Uh, no, it's not. It's pre-calculus CP. Jeez. I'm on the AP computer science mindset because I just had my AP class and they have their AP exam tomorrow. And I'm very concerned for them. Uh, I hope they do well. I'm sure they will, but I'm, I'm concerned. In any case, this is not AP computer science. This is pre-calculus CP. And we are doing some trig stuff today, specifically double identities groups, which should be a good time. A couple of reminders I want to give you is I want to make sure that you guys do fill out the attendance form on Google Classroom. Make sure you do that. Make sure your microphones are muted and your webcams are disabled, which hasn't seemed to be a problem. Uh, if you do have any questions, though, at any point or need to participate at any point, please feel free to unmute yourself and just do so. Don't feel like you're interrupting or it's rude or anything like that. You could also type in the chat if you feel uncomfortable uh, interrupting like that. Today, what I would like to do is I would like to go through one of these triangle problems again with you, like we did last class, uh, where we have to construct a triangle and find sine of 2a, cosine of 2a, and tangent of 2a. And then after that, I would very much like to uh, go through some proofs with you on these double angle identities. The proofs are done the same way as the proofs we've seen before, but now we just see our double angle identities getting thrown into the mix, and we see how we can you know, proceed with those types of things. Thing I want to make sure I mention to you, a very important thing, is that after class today, being that it is a Thursday class, it's the pre-calc routine, that you will be getting a progress assessment sent to you via email. It is a graded progress assessment, so make sure you get that done. Uh, it will be due again Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. It is five problems involving double angle identities. So there's two just plain simplifying problems like we did yesterday. There is one triangle problem like this, which is why I want to make sure I did another one with you. And there's two proofs. Okay? So that's what you have coming your way via email. Again, it will be sent out today. That gives you Thursday afternoon, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday to get that done. All right. Let's go ahead and jump right in, though, to this triangle problem right here. It says that if angle A is acute, meaning that it's less than 90 degrees, right? So it's less than 90 degrees, which means that it's in the first quadrant. And the cosine of A is 4 over 5. We want to find all of those lovely things. So first things first, let's start by drawing an actual triangle. Not going to try to draw it to scale here. Just saying we're going to draw a triangle in the first quadrant. Nice right triangle, right? Again, remember that here, if, suppose that this is our center of the circle. The first quadrant is up and to the right. That's why our triangle looks like this. We'll call this angle A. And if the cosine of A is 4 fifths, how do we define cosine? Oh, yeah. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So if this is angle A, then the cosine of that would be 4 fifths because this side would be 4 and this side would be 5. All right. Now we want to find all of those things. Hopefully it's a little obvious to you to say, well, if I want to find the sine of 2A, I don't even know anything about the sine value right now at all. So let's try to, we probably need to find the sine value first. Now, in order to find the sine value first, I need to find the opposite side first because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. How do we find a missing side in a right triangle? Little Pythagorean theorem. Let's call this y for now. I can say 4 squared plus y squared should equal 5 squared. That gives us 16 plus y squared should equal 25. Subtract 16 from both sides, you get y squared is equal to 9, which means y is 3. Okay, so I now know that that side of the triangle is 3. That means I could say that the sine of A should be equal to 3 over 5. That's 3 fifths. And that gives us now the information that we need in order to actually solve this problem. So in order to solve this problem, we first want to try to find the sine of 2A. Right? Little recall from last class. The way that the sine double angle identity is, is defined, you can actually see it on the sidebar now. I added it way at the bottom there. Uh, it's 2 times sine of A times cosine of A. All right. And we know what all those values are. We know that the sine of A is this, and we know that the cosine of A is this. So we can just plug them in and say, well, this is 2 times the sine of A. That's 3 fifths. Times the cosine of A. That's 4 fifths. And using our handy-dandy calculator, we could say that we get 2 times 3 fifths times 4 fifths, and I get 0.96, which as a fraction should be 24 over 25. Of 
questions on that. That's just using the double angle identity. Okay. Cosine is done the same way, where I want to find the cosine of a. The interesting thing about the cosine one is, again, you sort of have three choices. There's three common variants for how cosine is presented. You could see it as cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. Cosine of 2a could also be represented as 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. And could also be represented as uh, or 2, uh, sorry, 1 minus 2 sine squared of a. Okay. So all three of those representations are valid for cosine of 2a. You could do cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a or 2 cosine squared of a minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared of a. We're going to actually see today in the proofs, it's kind of a big challenge of those proofs, maybe not a big challenge, like an overwhelming challenge, but a main point of those proofs is to sort of figure out if I need to use cosine of 2a, which of the three variants do I use? So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But in any case, when you're doing just a problem like this, you could pick whichever variation you want. It doesn't particularly matter. For our purposes, I usually like to pick the first one, but if you, are, if you want to pick this one instead or you want to pick this one instead, you'll get the same answer in the end. But using that first identity, I can say it's the same as, well, cosine A is 4 fifths, so it's going to be 4 fifths squared. Minus sine of A is 3 fifths, so it's going to be 3 fifths squared. And again, using a calculator, you don't need a calculator, but it certainly is convenient. I would do 4 fifths squared minus 3 fifths squared, and I get 0.28 as a fraction at 7 over 25. Last but not least, to find the tangent of 2a, we didn't do the formula for tangent, but we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So we can say the tangent of 2a is the sine of 2a over the cosine of 2a. And we found those values right here. Well, the sine of 2a was 24 over 25. The cosine of 2a was 7 over 25. I can now multiply by the reciprocal. So I got my 24 over 25 times the reciprocal, 25 over 7. The 25s go away, and you would get that the tangent is 24 over 7. Okay. Any questions about how that was done at all? That is a little recap of what we did last class. Should make sense. Should be clear, but again, if you have any questions, let me know. A okay? Feeling good? All right. Well, let's keep going then. So today, like I said, I'd like to present you with some proofs. So let's dive right in, shall we? Got, I got four proofs lined up here today, four good proofs. Ready? Let's start with one that looks like this. Okay. I did say four good proofs. Is there really such a thing as a bad proof? I mean, come on. Uh, we got one minus cosine of 2x over one plus cosine of 2x equals the tangent squared of x. And I want to prove this. Let's prove that that's true. That 1 minus the cosine of 2x uh, over 1 plus the cosine of 2x is equal to the tangent squared of x. Well, how do we define tangent? Tangent, if you remember, is sine over cosine. We just use that right here. So when looking at something like this, you may be thinking to yourself, how do I know which variant of cosine of 2a to use? Well, I'd probably want to use the one here that has sine in it because I know that tangent has sine in its numerator. Here, I'd probably want to use the one that has cosine in it because tangent has cosine in its denominator. So that's my thought process when I'm thinking of something like this. Now, I actually don't think it matters which one you use because you would be able to arrive at this result, I'm pretty sure, either way. But... Just wanted to mention that the way I would make uh, determination is I'd say, well, our goal is tangent. Tangent has sine in the top and cosine in the bottom, sine in the numerator, cosine denominator. So that's why I'm going to use those substitutions like that. So working with the left-hand side, I'm going to say in the numerator, let's replace this with sine. So we got 1 minus 1, so in parentheses, minus 2 sine squared of, uh, of x, sorry. A of x. Okay? 
And in the denominator, let's replace this with its cosine variant. Let's have 1 plus 2 cosine squared minus 1. Sorry. Okay. Now we can go ahead and rewrite that and make this in the numerator. Let's simplify that to 1 minus. Notice the negative is going to distribute 1. And then plus 2 sine squared of x all divided by, in the denominator, I get 1 plus 2 cosine squared x minus 1. You would see here that your 1s would all cancel out. 1 minus 1 goes away in the numerator and in the denominator. That leaves us with, let's finish it right over here, 2 sine squared of x over 2 cosine squared of x. The 2s would cancel out. You'd be left with sine squared of x over cosine squared of x, which according to your reciprocal, uh, sorry, your quotient identity is tangent squared of x. So sine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x, that's your, uh, keep saying reciprocal, that's your quotient identity, which is tangent which is the right-hand side, and we're done, okay? Did that make sense to everybody, how that was done? Now, I'm pretty sure, now I'm kind of going off, uh, going rogue here, I didn't plan for this, but I'm pretty sure that if I replaced both of these with the first example, we could have still gotten to our end goal. Pretty sure that's true. Suppose that at this very step, I replaced this and this with the cosine squared minus sine squared. It would look like this. Cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. And in the denominator, it would be 1 plus cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. What would that look like? That would be 1 minus cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x. Yeah, this will work out. Over 1 plus cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. And then you'd have to recognize here that, ooh, 1 minus cosine squared is a Pythagorean identity. 1 minus cosine squared, you see it on the first line of Pythagorean identities, is sine squared. So that numerator would be sine squared plus sine squared, which is 2 sine squared. Gets us right back to this step. And then in the denominator, 1 minus sine squared of x is cosine squared of x. So you would get your cosine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. Again, that's the Pythagorean identity. And that comes to cosine x. So it would get you to the same spot. Maybe slightly trickier, but still, you would actually get to your same answer if you went this route or you went this route. Okay. Any questions about that, even in the slightest? All right, we got more proofs to do. So let's do it. We're about halfway home. Let's do some more proofs. We got this one. 1 minus tangent squared of x over 1 plus tangent squared of x is equal to cosine of 2x. We want to prove that that's true. Okay. Prove that that's true. 1 minus the tangent squared of x over 1 plus the tangent squared of x is cosine of 2x. In this particular case, I would probably elect to still work with the left-hand side, and I want to make it look like one of my definitions for cosine of 2x, either the sine squared minus cosine squared, or sorry, cosine squared minus sine squared, or, around, or the 1 minus 2 sine squared, or the 2 cosine squared minus 1. I want to make it look like one of those three variants. So let's mess around with this left-hand side a little bit and see if we can make that happen. One thing I notice is that in the denominator, tangent squared of x plus 1, you see it listed under the Pythagorean identities right there. It's that third line. Pythagorean identities, tangent squared of x plus 1, that's the same as the secant squared of x. So I'm going to replace the denominator on this left side using the Pythagorean identity with secant squared of x. It's equal to cosine of, uh, we don't need to do that right now. Well, now that I have that, I can split up this fraction here, and I could write it as 1 over secant squared of x minus tangent squared of x over secant squared of x. We've done that, and we've seen that in other proofs, right? How you could split up that fraction apart. They're both divided by secant squared of x, so let's just pull them apart. The benefit of doing that is changing everything to sine and cosine. We can see that this is going to be 1 over 1 over cosine squared of x, which we're going to fix in just a minute. 
minus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. That's tangent squared over 1 over cosine squared of x. Now we can go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal here. That's going to be 1 times cosine squared x over 1. I'll just write it out for you. Minus. We're going to do the same thing. How do you divide by a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. Here's our fraction of sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. And instead of dividing by the fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Cosine squared, cosine squared goes away. I get here now cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Is that not our definition for the cosine of 2x? I think it most certainly is. So that's the same as the cosine of 2x by the identity, right? You can see it's the very first line, right, in that sidebar below me of the double angle identities under cosine. Cosine of, uh, squared of x minus sine squared of x is cosine of 2x, which is the same as the right side. So we are donezo. Okay. Any question about how that was done at all? Feeling A okay? All right, two more proofs for the day. Two more proofs for the day. How about this? There we go. Ready? Let's prove. I remember to write the word prove this time. We got 1 plus sine of x minus cosine 2x all over cosine of x plus sine of 2x. Let's prove that that's equal to the tangent of x. I like this problem a lot. It uses both the cosine and the sine double angle identity. So let's make it happen. Again, I would apply my logic for cosine and say, what variation of cosine do I actually want to use? Well, since we're aiming for a tangent, tangent is sine over cosine, meaning it has sine in the numerator. So I'd want to use the variation here that has sine in it. I'm sure you could arrive at the correct answer if you use any of the other variations as well. But I think to make my life easier, I'm going to say that cosine of 2x in that numerator, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus sine of 2x. Or sorry, 1 minus sine squared of x. Okay? So that's what exactly I'm going to do. Work with the left-hand side. We're going to replace this here. I got my 1 plus sine of x minus. I'm going to replace my cosine of 2x with the identity, the middle line identity in the cosine of 2x down at the very bottom of the sidebar here. 1 minus sine. 2 sine squared of x over cosine x plus. And we'll get to that one in a minute. But again, the reason why I was, you know, drawn in that direction was because my goal is the tangent. And tangent has sine in its numerator, sine over cosine. So let's keep everything with sine just in the numerator if we're aiming for the tangent. Here I have the sine of 2x. There's only one way to go with that one. That's 2 sine x cosine x. Now let's see what we can do. Let's simplify a little bit and see what happens. Here this negative is going to distribute here and here. So I'm going to get in the numerator 1 plus the sine of x minus 1, that's convenient, plus 2 sine squared of x all over, I'll leave the denominator the same for now, cosine of x plus 2 sine of x cosine of x. Nice thing again is that 1 minus 1 is going to go away. So let's rewrite this quickly as... Looks like we got sine of x plus 2 sine squared of x in the numerator. In the denominator, we have cosine of x plus 2 sine of x cosine of x. Okay. At this point, it would be very tempting to just do what in math we often refer to as cherry picking and just be like, cross out, cross out, and like go from there. But we can't cross out anything yet because there's addition in the way, right? We need to make sure that we have multiplying factors before we cross things out and cancel out. So what I can do in the numerator is take out a greatest common factor of sine, and I can take out a greatest common factor of cosine in the denominator. So taking out a GCF of sine in the numerator, that would leave me with sine of x times 1 plus 2 sine of x. You see that? If we take out a factor of sine of x from sine of x, we're left with 1. If we take out a factor of sine of x from 2 sine squared of x, we're left with 2 sine of x. 
in the denominator, take out a greatest common factor of cosine. Leaving us with take out a factor of cosine from cosine, you're left with 1. Here you get 2 sine of x. And look at that. Now the stars have a line. 1 plus 2 sine of x goes away. 1 plus 2 sine of x. And I'm left with sine of x over cosine of x, which we know is the tangent of x, which is the same as the right-hand side. And so we are done. Okay. Again, make sure you put – I like all the personal proof signatures you guys have been using. Make sure you keep it up with your personal proof signature. All right, we clear on that? One more proof to go. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Here we go. We have proof. Sine of x times the tangent of x plus the cosine of 2x times the secant of x is equal to the cosine of x. All right. I like this problem a lot. Again, it's another one of those problems where you have just a lot of different concepts all being mixed together. You have sine, tangent, cosine of a double, secant, a lot of things going on. Let's again work with that left-hand side and see what we can do. What I would do before I actually even expand out the cosine of 2x, before I even make that a big thing, let's change everything to sine and cosine and see how we can simplify this expression. So if I do that, I can rewrite this as sine of x times tangent is sine over cosine, right? Just like that. Plus, cosine of 2x, we'll leave that the same for now. I'm not going to touch that yet. I will in a minute. Times secant, that's the same as 1 over cosine. Okay. Do you see by doing that, that allows us to now write this as sine squared of x over cosine of x for that first term. Sine of x times sine of x is times sine squared over cosine. Plus, here we get cosine of 2x over cosine of x. Now, since both of those denominators are the same, we can stick those fractions together, and I can say that this is sine squared of x plus cosine of 2x all over cosine of x. See how that helped really condense my problem before I even started to expand the cosine of 2x? I think it really helped get rid of all that stuff. Now, again, I'm thinking about my goal. I'm thinking about my goal in the back of my head. I could say I want to get cosine of x. How can I make that happen? Well, one thing you might remember is that a definition of cosine of 2x is cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. And if I already have a sine squared of x here, those sine squares would cancel out, and that would probably get me on my way. Now, if you chose you know, a direction, if you said this is the same as 2 cosine squared of x minus 1, and you found that that just didn't work for you, you could always backtrack and try a different direction. But again, I think the cool thing about this is all three possibilities for cosine will actually work out, or at least they should. I'll show you. Let's start with the first one. If I replace this with cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, you would get sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, all over cosine of x. The sine squareds would go away. You'd be left with cosine squared of x over cosine of x, which would cancel out and give you your cosine. Right? Right hand side, and we're done. Right? So that would work out fine if you went with the cosine squared minus sine squared. If you went with the, another option, say you said, let's replace it with 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. We would get sine squared in the numerator plus 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. That's another valid replacement for the cosine of 2x because there's three variations of it. Well, sine squared minus 1 is cosine squared, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. Um, if I did that, let's see. That's not true at all. I apologize. Uh, if I did that, let's see. Could I make anything out of that? Could I make anything out of that? Maybe I couldn't make anything out of that. Uh, maybe I couldn't make out of that anything out of that. Let's see. 2 cosine squared x minus 1. I have my sine squared of x. Maybe I could split apart my fractions and go from there. 
but that might might be a little harder. Now that I'm looking at this, that one might be a little harder. I might not be able to do anything with that. Hold on, we'll keep that one on the back burner. What if I replace it with the third option, sine squared of x? I think this one works nicely. Plus one minus two sine squared of x, right? Here, this one works nicely over cosine of x. I would say sine squared minus two sine squared is gonna be minus one sine squared. Let's replace that with minus one sine squared plus one over cosine of x. And then sin one minus sine squared is cosine squared. That's our Pythagorean identity. So I get cosine squared of x over cosine. And it gets us to the same point of cosine of x. So that one would work. How does this one work in the middle? I'm trying to see. This one's definitely a tough one. Uh, let's see. I could replace. Oh, you know what? I have an idea. I have an idea. Taking this, right? I could replace sine squared of x with 1 minus cosine squared of x. Maybe that would help. And then plus r2 cosine squared of x minus 1. Ah, that would do it. That would do it. That would do it. I knew we could do it. Right, see, we don't give up. We don't cry. We don't panic. We just say, wait a minute. Let me take an extra second. Let's just think about it. We replace sine squared of x with 1 minus cosine squared of x. You would get 1 minus 1 goes away. Cosine squared, 2 cosine squared minus 1 cosine squared is 1 cosine squared. And we get back to that same exact step. And there we go. Okay. So what, regardless of whichever one you picked, I obviously think this one's the easiest to see, but you could have still arrived at that correct answer in either way, which is cool. I think that's another way of just showing that the cosine, all three variations are equivalent and they're interchangeable. And whichever one you pick is, is you know, important to, to suit your needs of whatever you're aiming for. I always look at my goal and I say, which of these replacements would be most beneficial in working towards my goal? All right. Anyway, any questions, comments, or concerns about that at all? Doesn't seem like it. So what I want to emphasize again is you will be receiving a progress assessment, our usual pre-calc routine. It will be heading in your inbox. I have it scheduled to go out at 12 o'clock, so you should be getting it very soon. Um, it is five questions. It is two simplifying problems like we did last class. One triangle problem like we started class with and two proofs like I showed you the four proofs today. Just two proofs like that. All right. Make sure you take a picture of your work. Send it to me via email by Sunday night so I can grade it and get an aspect for you. It'll be our fourth progress assessment of the year. All right. Everyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. But I do hope you have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic weekend. And I will see you next time. I'll see you is Tuesday. So it's a long time. So enjoy. And I'll see you then. Bye, everyone. Thank you. And have a great day. Have a good day, Mr. Giorgio. See you later. Have a nice day. Bye. Take care.